Hello and welcome, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really, really well. In this video, we're actually going to go into the third of a three-part series on how you can make basically the best audio visualizers that like the world has ever seen, or at least Twitch or YouTube gaming, or wherever you seem to apply this. So this is OBS Studio filters and plugins that we're using to make a really cool audio visualizer. In part one, we added the audio visualizer using Spectralizer plugin. I showed you exactly how to do that and configure the spectralizer, but that on its own wasn't great. It kind of created like a fairly vanilla, bland audio visualizer. So in part two, we then made that look amazing, and I showed four or five different effects and techniques that you can use, including mirroring the sources, blurring, shading, color corrections, and a number of other different things like that, and transforms. So we're going to be adding the artwork and the title of the song in this video. If you want to learn how to add the spectralizer in the first place and also the beautification of that, you're gonna have to click the link in the descriptions for the other two videos that I've already done. If you're simply wanting to add a title and some artwork or either of those two things to your stream as a source, then this video is the one for you. This is specifically for OBS Studio, but I am also gonna make a version of this for Streamlabs OBS. So by the time you watch this, there's a good chance I may have made it. And if so, the link will be in the description. As always, if you find this useful, feel free to hit the like button. I really appreciate if you subscribe. And if you wanna ask me any questions at all, let's go for part three. So in part one, we added the vanilla spectralizer and configured it. Part two, we made it look amazing, a little bit like this. Well, we added some blurring effects, some shading, we duplicated it, we did some flip rotation work. And as you can see, it's made a really nice, subtle, branded effect on the audio visualizer. In this video, we're now going to add the album artwork to this. Firstly, we need to install a little application called Snip. Now, what Snip does is sits on your desktop and it essentially integrates with Spotify. There's an authorization loop that you have to go through to allow it to authorize. You install this. It's a very small application and it will basically be able to pull the data from Spotify and kind of just place it as a browser source on your stream. You first need to go to the GitHub, which I will link in the description below. First thing to note here as well about the actual version is that the different versions have done different things and I believe at a certain point I think it was possibly like version 6.9 like 9.1 or 9.0. It stopped supporting other audio platforms other than, I think, Spotify and iTunes. If, you're, if you've got like a weird audio program that you're using, this might still work. It might still be integrated, but I would recommend using an older version of this. I'm going to be integrating this into my Spotify. Therefore, I'm going to go with the most recent version. So in the most recent version, I need to stress this, that they've made a comment here about making Spotify detection substantially better. So this will improve the song text quality and the album artwork accuracy and things like that due to windows api limitations you can't get the main window handle from a process minimized to the system tray with this version snip will only need to see the spotify window one time and it will work from then on until you restart spotify in a nutshell if you're having trouble seeing this work on your stream once you've installed it and it's not updating the text file that you'll be reading from just make sure that you open snip again by searching for it and make sure that spotify is open when you search for snip okay so once you've installed this you may have to restart that aspect of it but basically snip needs to be open in your desktop in the bottom corner here so now when i play a song on spotify it will detect what the song is and the title and the artist to install it you simply click into it download the zip file and go through the normal installation process. This will save to your downloads area. You can unpack this file by dragging and dropping it into the downloads folder from the, uh, the zip folder. You just need to click, double click on that snip icon there. It's an application file that will install the application. Once this is installed, you should have access to these options here. When you right click, you can then click on these options here. We want to select Spotify if we're going with the Spotify integration. And once I click that, it will say snip successfully authorized with Spotify. You may close this window now. The first time you do this, you may see a pop up from Spotify branded that says you authorize this to work with your Spotify. Clearly, you need to say yes to that to authorize the title to be like red 
and then rewritten to a text file, if that makes sense. There is a list of known issues here, so I'll try my best to answer the questions, but I'm not an expert on Snip or on Spotify integrations. This has worked for me pretty smoothly, and I know a lot of other people use Snip. If you have issues, by all means, try asking me if you want, but I would recommend looking at the issues section first. There's more than likely going to be an answer to your question in this list here, and you won't have to wait for me to respond. So now that we've got Snip installed, there's loads of different options that we can look at here. We can set the output format, which I'll go into in a sec. We can save the track history, which is quite useful if you want the text file, like a separate text file to pull in like a track history. If you want people to be able to look at previous songs played and things like that. We can also set the Spotify album artwork and keep that as a small, medium, medium or large file. But now we're just going to locate the text file that we're then going to read from to add this. And bear in mind at the moment, we're just adding the title of the track to the audio visualizer. So to locate this, you may already know where the files are located from the installation process that you've just done. But I would recommend typing snip in here. Just bear in mind there is a snipping tool, which I actually used in one of the earlier videos in the three series here, the free video series here. The snipping tool is something very different. That's what you use to create like a screenshot essentially. But we can find snip.exec, right click this and open the file location. That's the quick way to find it. I now know that this is where snip is located. Just make sure you remember where you've placed it or do a search for it, okay? So what's happened here now is we now have a snip artwork file, which has got a default name. We have a snip text file, which has also got a default name. The names of those files will not change. And that's quite important because later on, we're going to be telling OBS Studio to look for that specific file name and pull whatever information is within it, whether that's artwork or text file. So as you can see, we've got no music playing at the moment, so we don't see any information in the text file. I'm going to come out of that file. I'm going to press play on the music. I'm going to now click on, on this and it's brought in 88 mile per hour disco. Aris Heller, incidentally, one of my favorites from the track list. So we now have a text file that has dynamically placed that new text data into the text file. We can then use that to place on our stream. I'm gonna leave the music playing while I do this. I'm gonna X off this. That text file is there. I'm gonna copy this directory in the top. I'm gonna to minimize here, and I'm gonna add here a new text GDI file as a source. We wanna read from file, and we wanna to browse to that file. So we can just paste in the directory that we just copied there. Click OK on that and we want to select the snip file. Press OK on that. Text now appears. So it's pasted in the text there and that text will dynamically change. For instance, if I just skip the track, it updates that. Okay, so that looks kind of cool, but we could update this and increase the fonts, change the fonts, make it look a lot more beautiful. That's kind of cool. For instance, we can select a color. We might want to select like a pink color, whatever. You may want it to be like whatever, 75% opaque. Um, we can add some gradient fonts to it and I'm gonna change the font, of course. Should we go with Arcade? Arcade Classic's cool, but it does sometimes have problems with like, that looks kinda cool, Arcade Classic. But you just know it's gonna have problems with some characters. We'll leave it there, we'll see what happens. It might be okay. But I'm actually not happy with the contrast that that gives against the audio visualizer itself. So what I'm just gonna do here, Change the color a little bit. The more kind of neon-y blue. Yeah, that seems to give a little bit more contrast. Click OK on that. We can add gradients and things like that to it. Now what I'm right now gonna do is right click and transform and rotate this 90 degrees. And that then just can be placed onto the audio visualizer. And that'll update as and when the song updates. We can see when we pause the music, it will disappear because it's a dynamic file and it's reading from Spotify that nothing is playing. So as soon as we press play again, that will now appear. Final thing I'm just going to do is right click this on the text and I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to add a scroll filter. And this will just allow me to make this move through at a certain speed. We can have it really fast or backwards or whatever. I actually quite like it going this way. It's a little bit different. I'm going to have it at that speed. You can also do the verticals and then you create that kind of effect, but I'm not personally a fan of that. We want it to loop. Let's click close on that. I'm going to just snip this and trim it a little bit by holding Alt and bringing this in a little bit. So it just means that that length and depth of it it's cropped it out and it's got not going the full way. It just looks a little bit cooler in my opinion. Now all that's left to do is get the album artwork as well from this or the song artwork. Before we do that, I just want to quickly mention about the right clicking the output format. By default, I think there's like some like commas 
and some like dashes and it's quite squished together and stuff like that so in the output format you'll see there's like a separator here which is a dash uh, and stuff like that so you can choose the output format here by just making changes so if i wanted i could i could add like some free text here or whatever but what i've done here is i actually removed the dash that was there which put a dash between them we could if we wanted remove the commas either side of the song title i'm not going to do that because i think it's quite cool so yeah the final thing we now need to do is to add the album artwork so within the snip settings in the bottom right hand corner you can simply right click and keep spotify album artwork you can set the size that you want to keep as well now all we have to do is click the plus icon here go to an image okay on that and we're browsing to the same folder, but this time we're selecting the snip artwork. And I'll, I'll do an illustration of this, but if we snip, the, we click on snip on the artwork. So here we've got a kind of visual representation of it. Click OK on that. It comes on as quite small. I don't know why it's as small as that. You can resize it. Uh, let's say we put it in the corner here or something. We could add some like now playing text over the top of this, which is just like static text by clicking on the plus icon here for a new source. Text GDI, and we could simply call this now playing. Click OK on that, and the text would be now playing. We'll do the same process as we did for the other text. I'm not really bothered by that, to be honest, so I'm going to remove the now playing from it, but it's just giving you some ideas of the things that you can do. So just to illustrate what that looks like, we now have the artwork on there, we have the text on there, we've got the audio visualizer, and there's a lot more stuff we can do this. We could resize it, we could group it all together. Uh, there's loads of other stuff we can do, but hopefully I'll give you a really good flavor on what you can achieve with this. Uh, and, and so much more. I'm sure you guys have got some wonderful ideas of how you can utilize this. And please do drop the comments below. And let me know if you found this trio of videos useful. Let me know what you do with your audio visualizers. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.